Hey guys, what's going on? It's Frankie T here. Today we're going to start off by saying thanks for watching my previous videos. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button and the notification bell to be notified when new videos come out in the future. All right, here we go. Today we're painting the Incredible Hulk from the Marvel United Core box. And right here we're going to use some Death World Forest. Mix it together with some Snot Green, which is now called Warpstone Glow. All right. So we're going to mix that together nice and good, all right? Put it together all over the place, make your brush nice and moist, get some water on it, and then you're going to spread that all over his skin. Get that everywhere into all the crevices. Put it all over the place, all right? Put it all on his arms, his face, his toes, you know, his feet. All right, just get it everywhere. Do that a bunch, you're going to do it in a couple of coats and you're good to go. All right, next we're gonna to touch up on his hair here. I like to use Corvus Black for almost anything because it seems to be one of my favorite colors. You're gonna put that on his hair. You know, get do it a couple coats. No need to do it in uh, just one one quick one. Do it in like two two coats is good. All right. Next, you're gonna use some Nagaroth Knight for his pants. We're gonna go for an OG purple pants Hulk. All right. You're gonna put that on his pants, all over them, you know, on the belt area, like the waistband. You're gonna realize that you put too little, too much water in there. You're gonna put a little bit more paint in there with it, and then you're gonna spread that across. Remember, don't do it in one coat. Never do it just right out of the pot for the most part. Always do it in a couple coats, all right? Here we go. It's gonna be nice and nice and nice and thin, okay? Do it in a couple coats. Next, Mephiston Red. This is a nice little red I got here. You're gonna put that right in his mouth on his tongue and get that right in there. Put a, you could probably get away with doing this one in one coat. Maybe, maybe do two. Well, that was a quick one, okay. Next, we're gonna use Military Shade around his body. You're gonna to try to get that into all the crevices. You could put it on the skin as well, all over the place. You could definitely get away with doing a recessed shade, but you know, it's all good. Just don't let it pool up on top. Next, we're gonna do uh, not what's it called, Druchi Violet on the pants. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we're gonna touch up everything on his skin again. After you did the pants, when you spread it all over him, you know, just don't let the biggest tip I can say for the washes is just don't let it pool on the flat surfaces or in places you don't want it to be, or else then you get like huge like chunks of the the wash uh, solidifying it's going to become hard and it's not going to look good all right so just try to try to get it off of the flat areas even in the crevices you don't want it to be you don't want it to dry and uh get rid of all of the uh, detail as well all right next thing we're going to do here is we're going to cover up his skin again with the original color just the high areas whoosh, whoosh. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is do Mordfang Brown and Mephiston Red. Do like a little mixture of those two and you're gonna put those in his eyeball sockets. All right, just spread it all over the place on the eyeballs. Get it in there, spread it out. Just uh, try not to get it on his face, just in the socket itself. You can do it on, in the center too. It's easiest if you just, you know, put it all over the eyeball. Okay, and then just spread it all over the place. You know, you don't want to do just a, a like a black or something. This usually looks better. All right, next we're going to do the eyeball itself, and we're going to use Troll Blood's highlight. This one's from Privateer Press. I really like this color, and you're going to do it on just the eyeballs. All right, try to leave this the red and brown on the socket, and just hit up the eyeballs. You can just do this in a couple coats if you need to. A nice big brush with a fine, fine point is best. Alright, and once you're done, I use Death World Forest here. Um, I also might have used, uh, well, let me see, it's called um, 
Escorpeña Green from Vallejo. I kind of mixed that in as well with it later on. I don't know if I actually did keep it, but you could get away with just using Death World Forest for his eye, his eye color. Next, for the pupil, you're going to put some Bat in Black right in the center. You're going to try to make sure you still see some of that green showing on the outsides there. Again, like I said, the best thing for most brushes is something with a big brush with a fine point that you're able to just touch touch the tip on there. And then you get, you get, then you get a pupil nice and quick, easy. And you're going to have the best eyeballs you've ever seen in your life. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Okay, white scar, just put a little dot right on the top part of his eyes, uh, like that. Okay, and then do it on the next one, uh, yep, you're good, you're good, good to go. Alright, next thing, we're going to use Goblin Green from Vallejo and Death World Forest, and you're going to work this up to a pure Goblin Green. Okay, so what I like to do is when I'm doing my layering is mix some of the old color in and then use that with the new color. So just mix that together to a little, like maybe one to one ratio, maybe even less, and then build that up from there, all right? Put that all over the skin. You could leave, try to leave some of the original Death World Forest color mixture in the beginning and try to just glaze it right over top here. Put it all over the upper areas. Leave it out of the recesses. All right. And then you're gonna do the same thing with Nagaroth Knight for the pants. You're gonna just take that and you're gonna start coloring in the, uh, filling out the the pants again. You know, you got some big pants to fill. Put that on top. Make it nice and smooth and build it back up. Just try to stay out of the recesses and the darker areas, like in the in between his legs. Just try to keep it on top. You're gonna build this up to the brighter colors later on. You see with his back, I stayed out of his recesses on his skin. It's the best thing to do, and I probably built that up to a pure goblin green. All right, next thing is gonna be Nurgling Green and Goblin Green from Vallejo. Start off with a little mixture here together, and then you're gonna to try to keep it on the upper areas of the skin, okay? This is a, a big thing. You don't wanna to go too far down because you wanna you wanna keep it on like the uh, the parts that you think are gonna be that you wanna stand out the best. You can you can go overlap it a bit, but make sure that's like has a thin that's why you want your paints thin so that it doesn't what completely get rid of the old color from before and things blend together nicer and smoother all right so again try to leave your previous color work this up to a pure goblin green if you can or whatever you like best all right and then i think i didn't like what i was seeing so it was too sharp of transitions so I went back with that mid-tone with the Goblin Green and the Death World Forest, thinned it down pretty good, and then I just kind of glazed it over top of the center parts to try to blend the colors together better. Uh, this is easy, an easy technique to kind of meld them all together. Uh, you just glaze it back over top and, you're, and it makes the transitions from the colors much more smoother. So you still get the highlights and you still get the, sh the shades in there. It just tends to darken and just smooth everything together with the with the mid-tone. All right, next thing here, I'm gonna take some military shader again, and I'm just gonna go back into the recesses where I think it needs it. Just put that all, don't do it all over, just kind of a, like a pin wash. Just try to get in between the spots where you want it to, to blend and to, to really to really show some some detail on those muscles, especially on the Hulk, somebody who's bulging with huge muscles, all right? Just kind of give it a little wash on the inside of the crevices, and you're good to go. Next thing, I took Corvus Black and Administratum Gray. I tend to like this combination lately. I'm just gonna do some highlights on his hair. Uh, I don't, I didn't, I didn't really go to, I did not go to a pure Administratum Gray. I just did a little bit of highlights here and there on the head. 
just to give it so it stands out a bit. Oh, should almost missed that one. Uh, Nagaroth Knight and Xerius Purple. This is going to be the, similar to what we did on the skin. And we're going to highlight the pants. You can work this up to a pure Xerius skin if you want. Just try to keep it up. Try to keep it up to the, the upper areas. Next thing, Gene Stealer Purple and Xerius Purple. Same thing as before. Work that up to a pure Gene Stealer Purple if you like. Keep this one especially on the uppermost areas and where you want the highlights to be and where you, what you want to stand out. Okay, so butt cheeks especially. Try to make those pop like everything else. The calf muscle there, you're gonna wanna pop. And then you can even highlight with this and put some lines on there to add some detail to the pants to give it some uh, texture. All right, next is Corvus Black. I'm gonna put this all over the base, just everywhere um, on all the cement parts. And then you're going to, uh, you can leave it off the metal beam there. Just put it on all, everything else, all the rocks and everything on the on the bottom. All right. Next, I use Corax White for the fingernails, the toenails, the teeth, and it's a little blurry, but literally, I just run it along the top of the teeth and try to like brush just the front of the teeth. Next thing, gun metal. You can paint the metal beam and the steel rebar. Uh, that's a, connecting the, the pieces of concrete together. Okay, next I do a dry brush of cold gray. Cold gray here is going to go all over the like the, the cement pieces. You're going to do a fairly heavy dry brush here. Just spread it all over the place. Uh, try to stay away from the metal beam and just put it everywhere else. And it's gonna give you just make all the other details pop on the on the base plate itself. All right, just do this for a bit, and you'll be good to go to the next step, which is going to be the metal beam. All right, what I did here is I took typhus corrosion and just spread it all over the beam itself and hit all the areas that were metal and we're going to do a, high, a dry brush of that on that layer. All right, so after that dried, give it a little while, I took riser rust and I, it's a dry brush paint and I put that all over the metal beam to give it some a little bit of rust look as if that beam was uh, I don't know, corroded inside the wall or wherever the heck it was and just uh, I think it looks nice. And you can be done right after this too with the beam. Next thing, I felt like just putting some pigments on the base to give it a little dusty look. So I mixed together some AK Interactive Burnt Umber and Middle East Soil and just spread that all over his feet and all over the, the base itself. And then afterwards I gave it a little shake and brushed some of it off. And there you go, the Incredible Hulk from the Marvel United Core box. Uh, I like the way he turned out. I mean, it wasn't, I don't think it's necessarily my favorite work, but he was fun to paint. And it's fairly simple to paint him since he's mostly one color. You got some purple on there as well, but really he's, he's not too hard to paint. You could easily get away with doing it uh, in, with even less colors than this, but it was a good time. Thanks for watching. I'm Frankie T. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you on the next one. Ah.